Elementor Update 2.2 was released today, and in it there are nine new features or new updates or changes, some big, some small, that are going to affect you when you're building with Elementor. And I'm going to show you in this tutorial what all those nine are, how to use them, what they are, and why they're there. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we teach WordPress to change lives. So you can change your life by increasing your income, change your client's life by providing services that they need. And if you like that kind of thing, and you like WordPress tips and tricks and hacks, make sure you click subscribe, then the bell icon, so you don't miss anything. And with that out of the way, if you like Elementor and you want to know how to do pretty much anything with it, get on the wait list for my Do Pretty Much Anything with Elementor course. It's in the description down below, and it's a waiting list. There's no obligation. I haven't created the course yet, but I just want to see how much interest there is in this course. And if there's enough interest, I will create it. So check that out if you want to. And with that out of the way, let's head in the screen capture. I'll see you there. Get these nine enhancements for Elementor, all of which are in the free version. And of course it applies to the paid version as well because they're both on the site at the same time. But we have to update Elementor. So you're gonna have this update saying, update to version 2.2.0. Click on update now. Let's head into a page. There are a bunch of additions to pages themselves, the page editor, and there's also a bunch of additions to the settings and tools outside of the page editor. So let's cover the ones in the page editor first because those are likely the most important because they directly affect the most people, as in they're used to design pages. So I'm gonna click on edit with Elementor here. Wait till that loads. The most powerful feature added in version 2.2, in my opinion, is the navigator. You can open it by clicking on the 3D hamburger icon in the bottom left corner. You can also press Command I on a Mac, Control I on Windows, and it opens this little guy right here. You can move it around wherever you want. You can attach it to the right-hand side so it becomes part of the window. You can make it bigger. You can make it wider, taller and wider, I should say. And each of these section names here are by default not named very well but you can change the names. And why do you want to do that is because each section here represents a section on your page. And if you click on one of these sections, it takes you down to that section and it highlights it. So this section right here is this one right here. So we can double click on this. We can call it meet the team. And now we know this is the meet the team section. And if we are working on a big page, this makes it really easy to navigate. If we want to turn off meet the team, we click on this little eyeball here. Very similar to photo editing software where you can hide layers, here we can hide sections. This does not hide the section on the front end, so if we were to click on this and then save the page, that section would appear on the front end. We're only hiding this in the builder. If we click this little down arrow, we see content inside the section. So we have a column, click it again, we have a heading, a divider, and text. And we click on all these things and it highlights them in here, opens their options on the left, so you can easily navigate between areas. If we want to move the meet the team section, all we do is we drag and drop and it moves. That's probably not the best spot for it, but you get the idea. You can drag, drag and drop it to wherever you want. And rename all the sections is recommended. Otherwise, you don't know what they are. If you click on this down arrow here, it'll open all the sections at once or expand them all. So you can go through each of them. And that's a pretty cool little feature. Next pretty cool thing, if we have buttons, we now have an autocomplete feature for the link. Not just buttons, anywhere, any way you add a link to a page is now an autocomplete. So if you start typing in here about, for the about page maybe, it's looking, maybe I don't have an about page on this. I actually just pulled some stuff up. I've got a lot of test pages. So let's just put in test, and here we have a bunch of test pages that we can choose from. And if we pick one, it auto fills their URL. So you click on the name, it puts in the URL, and this autocomplete is for all URLs on any button, any link, anything you're building in Elementor. You have that autocomplete now. For images, we had CSS filters added a little while ago. Let's find an image that doesn't do that. This one, if we go to style, we have CSS filters, which I just called image filters a moment ago. Kind of the same thing, but they're CSS filters applied to images. Click on this pencil, we now have visual representations of what these do. So blurring is gonna blur it, and this line is actually getting a little blurrier. It's a small tweak. The options have not changed, just they added some visual representations. The next thing is column reversal for tablets. We had column reversal for mobile phones. When things shrink, quite often you have something on the right-hand side on a desktop that should be on top on a mobile phone, but the way websites work 
it puts it down below on a mobile phone because the column on the right goes below the column on the left. So we had this column reversal option for mobile phones. They've now added that for tablets. So in any section that has columns, we go to advanced or click on the section, click on the six dots, go to advanced, go to responsiveness, and we can turn on reverse columns for a tablet and for mobile phone or just mobile phone or just tablet or whatever combination you see fit. Of course, testing that would be the way to go. Next option is lazy load video. See, there's a video on this page. There is not. So let's add a video, throw it in right here. So we have our video here with our settings. If we go down to the image overlay settings and then turn on the image, we can choose lazy load now. So if we turn that on, the video assets are not loaded into a page. But if you don't have an image for the cover, it shows as blank because nothing's loaded into the page. Normally, hang on, let's add a picture to this so we can see what this looks like. So let's add her. She'll be our video image. So with lazy load, we can have this image appear, but that's all that appears. Normally when you load a page and you have multiple videos, even as one video, the video starts downloading as a buffer. So when someone clicks play, it starts playing instantly, which people like, people like instant, but it slows down page load times. And so with lazy load, you can now have just this image here. So if it's a small lightweight image, it'll be quick to load. And the video does not load until someone clicks play. And internet services are really fast these days, so it's not like there's a huge lag, but there will be a bit of a lag because nothing's been downloaded yet. But we now have lazy load for videos and it'll more than likely help your site load speed if you have a lot of videos. Another thing that happened in this update, let's see if I can find one, probably not, let's just add one to the page. The name of the column section has been changed to intersection. And so it, the functionality is unchanged, it's called intersection. Apparently, when people were doing columns and things, they weren't doing them properly. That's why they changed the name. If they right click on here, on any area, we can add a column. So we have three columns now, we can add a column to this one. It's three columns. Don't think we can add a column to sections that easily. But either way, they weren't using the inner or the column section very well, so they changed it to intersection. I don't know if that's gonna help people use it better without some more education from Elementor as to what exactly we're doing wrong, but they've changed the name anyway. Something else that's been added outside of the editor now is, I should know first, one more thing inside the editor. When they added the right click functionality, which is this right here, when you right click somewhere, you have the, all these options that are Elementor specific, they got rid of the hover over options, which people like. You used to be able to hover over this pencil and you have some options show up. You hover over this column icon, have some options show up. Those were removed when the right click was in introduced. Now we can get them back. So if we go to Elementor and then settings and advanced, this editing handles option, we change that to show, click on save changes, come back into Elementor, refresh. Now, if we hover over this pencil, we have those options pop out again, which a lot of people were sad, went away, and now you can have them back. And what's even better, you keep the right click functionality. So you have the best of both worlds. You can have both the flyouts and the right click. So if that makes you happy, then that's awesome. Another thing we have now is a debug feature. So when we're on a page, let's go to preview this page. So up here, we don't see anything right now. But if we head into Elementor and then Tools, we have a debug bar option. We enable this, click on Save Changes, come back out here, refresh. This may not work on the preview, but I think it should. Here it is. Elementor debugger was, was just added. It shows us which page template is being loaded and which theme template file is being loaded. And that way we can troubleshoot problems. That's why it's called a debugger. This is also automatically enabled if you have debug on inside your WP config file. But if you don't have that, then go through the tools sections like I just showed you, and then you'll get the debugger here. This is more for advanced users, or if you're having some kind of conflict and you can't figure out why, this might give you some more information. Now, the last thing that was added, which is for new users, if we go back to the dashboard, after version 2.2 is installed, we have a new welcome screen, which may not may or may not show up here because I'm not a new user. Uh, let's see what this welcome is. That's the WordPress welcome. Yeah, so it's not showing up for me right now. But what it is is basically a, a welcome screen in here, and it gives people the option to watch a video, to learn more about Elementor, read some blog posts about Elementor, and just, it's more of a an onboarding process for new users who are just installing Elementor for the first time. And for all you guys who already have Elementor, that's gonna be very irrelevant. And that is the last of the nine features that have been added to Elementor with the version 2.2 update. Quick rundown of what they are. The welcome screen I just mentioned, the navigator, URL autocomplete, 
editing handles. When you hover over that pencil, you get those editing options. Visual cues for CSS filters. Reverse columns for tablet now, in addition to mobile phones. Lazy load of video, the debug bar, and the column widget has been renamed to intersection. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit subscribe, then the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.